Welcome, welcome, welcome to Workspace 101, Tips and Tricks for Organizing Your Home Office. And I'm sure, like ourselves, you never anticipated that you were going to be home as long as you are. And so we've developed this short, about 30-minute webinar to help you become more productive at home and to even think strategic, strategically about how you're going to design and create more of a productive, organized workspace. So I am going to hand over to Laura to make a couple of initial introductions. Thank you, Janet. Janet Bernstein is the owner of Philadelphia's largest team of professional organizers. Originally from the UK, Janet founded the Organizing Professionals in 2007. Their services include residential home organizing, white glove move management, senior moves and relocation, photo and computer organizing, and so much more. They have been named Best of Philly three times and the Best of Mainline in 2019 and 2020. Janet is a certified professional organizer, has specialist certificates in ADHD and chronic disorganization, and is a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. Thanks, Laura. And Laura Byron has a degree in interior design. She started her career focusing on kitchen and bath design for a national home builder. During that period, Laura was awarded two Synergy Awards. Congratulations. And over four years ago, Laura joined the team at Diplomat Closet Design and has enjoyed working solely on interior built-ins that enhance the organization and function of each client's home. Most recently, Laura was recognized as top 40 under 40 in the national wood products industry. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Now, right now, we are all finding ourselves oh, having a bit of a technical difficulties. <laughs> right now, we are all finding ourselves in a very different environment than we were five months ago. And I know I was not alone when I thought I was only going home for two weeks to set up a temporary workspace. And then during that period, news on the pandemic was evolving and new restrictions and shutdown periods were extending and the end seemed to be nowhere in sight. So for the first couple of weeks, I was setting up and breaking down my workspace every day. And then I realized I really needed to focus on putting together a more permanent workstation that I could really be organized and efficient to be able to get work done at home. And I think that's where a lot of us are now. We are past that temporary and we're looking for some long-term solutions. Exactly. And uh, when we're coming into a client space, we're, we're big believers in location, location, location. It applies not just to but purchasing real estate, but feeling really comfortable in the space that you're going to designate and create as your home office. And so when we're working with clients, we like to ask them, well, where do you like to sit? Where do you, where do you feel most comfortable? And that's usually the place that they gravitate to when, when work, working from home. So it may be all well and good if you have a really wonderful large space in your basement that's away from everyone, there's no distractions, but when you're down there, it's dark, it's a little bit dingy, and you just don't enjoy being in the space. So first and foremost, you have to love the space that you're going to be working in. Light, I think, is an absolute key element. And then also proximity, proximity to other family members. If you've got a couple of kids at home and you're primarily the one that's supervising them, again, a, an attic space or a basement area is probably not going to work for you. So again, proximity to family members could be really a key a key piece in, in, how we, in how and where you're going to create your space. And then what are you looking at as well? So for me, my home office overlooks the street. So yes, I've become that neighbor who knows exactly all the comings and goings of everyone on the street because my office and my desk overlooks the street. So that's good and bad. I'm sure it can be very distracting at times, but I um, guarantee that no one's, no one's burglarizing my house anytime soon. Now, if your home does not have a study incorporated into the floor plan like Janet's, it can be a bit challenging to find the right spot where it does feel like an area where you can set up long term, but also where it works seamlessly with the design and flow of your home. 
And as Janet mentioned, if you have little kids, it can make it even trickier to find that spot. So for myself, I actually ended up setting up my own office space in my daughter's playroom because I found she was less likely to interrupt me if I was in her space. So I took over a corner and I really made that work for me during that period of time. And through my experience designing for clients where there's not that dedicated home office in the home, it's fun to get creative. And some of the spaces we have used to make office spaces an unused reaching closet, which becomes a great nook for some floating shelves and a desk. Um, formal living rooms, you might not necessarily consider that as a location, but in this space, we could design a beautiful bookcase with the desk incorporated. So it's not only aesthetically pleasing, but it also becomes very functional for you. And a lot of times people have a guest room and it's not a frequently used room, but they do have that occasional guest that comes once a year and they really don't want to give that space up. So Murphy beds are a great way to incorporate a built-in, to incorporate into a built-in office. So when the bed is up, you have a large functional office space but when your guest is in town, you can convert it right back to a comfortable guest room. Yeah, I love the idea of a Murphy bed. I've always wanted one. <laughs> so again, design with your space and needs in mind is a really key piece of advice, I think. I recently was working with a client and she also is working from home now and she was converting her, her guest room into a home office. And she kept talking about the guests that were going to be there and making sure that they were going to feel comfortable. And when I asked her how many guests a year she typically had, she would say, well, maybe, you know, a couple of nights a year. And so I said, well, let's flip that around. Let's concentrate on your needs first. And then let's, let's take into consideration your guests that are maybe there just a couple of times a year. So that was number one. And then designing with your skill set in mind is also really important. Are you a minimalist type of worker? Do you like clear countertops? Not everyone does. It's not optimal for everyone. Or do you need everything out so that you remember where things are, so that they're easily um, retrievable? So designing with your needs in mind is absolutely key. And then again, don't design for just you know, the next few months. Think about a year from now, three years from now. Maybe you will be working from home for several years. Maybe Maybe, maybe not. So again, would you be like Laura's working in a child's playroom right now, but you know, she's not always going to be a little kid with toys. So again, thinking long-term I think is really important. Again, do you, need, do you need a file drawer? Hopefully most of you are paperless, but even in really paper-free homes, you probably still need at least one file drawer for, for key documents. So that's something to consider as well. What about a sitting or a standing desk? Now, I, I have the penny pinches version of the standing desk, which means that when I'm tired of sitting down, I usually place a big box or a file tub or container underneath my computer so I can stand up a little bit. Works for me. And then finally, what about background? Do you, do you have a lot of video calls? So do you need a nicer looking background? Would that be helpful as well? These are a few things to consider when you're designing with your needs in mind. So as Janet mentioned, for those of us that are not paperless, our files can pile up. And I myself am guilty of that at times. And it is very easy for me to just want to collect everything, put it in a basket and say, okay, I will go through this later. And some of us have that beloved junk drawer where we just kind of do that quick swipe, tuck everything away, and then wait till later time to organize it and really go through those items. So when it comes time to planning your home office, you really need to consider what is important, what do I need in order to stay organized. And home office equipment, it's not the most attractive looking thing. Piles of papers and folders, um, they are something that you wanna really have tucked away if you are working from home. So once you have that list of the items you know you need planned for in your office space, we can then design custom cabinetry to accommodate them. And some of those options can be a built-in filing drawer. These can come in all different cabinet designs. They could even work within your kitchen, which always becomes the main hub and that drop zone for everything. So a filing drawer built into cabinetry keeps your counters clear and it lets you stay organized. Um, and printers and scanners, 
again, not pretty to look at, but they are very convenient to have in open rooms that are easy for everyone to get to, especially if you have the kids at home printing schoolwork, the location needs to be functional. So having them tucked away on a rollout tray and behind an attractive cabinet door, it gives you that flexibility you need without compromising the design of your dining room or your family room. And a lot of times when you're creating an office space, you need to consider electrical components. And where you wanna set up is not necessarily always convenient to an electrical outlet, but there are ways to address that without the need of bringing in an electrician. And then one of the images you're seeing is a pop-up outlet. And they're actually designed with an eight foot cord sometimes even longer, and you can plug them in and we can design and build around them so that way the outlet is right where you need it to be. So as you can see, there are so many ways to create an attractive workspace that is functional and that accommodates any equipment and files you may have. Yeah, those are great design ideas. I would have loved to have my printer away tucked, tucked away like that. It would have been wonderful. <laughs> okay, so now you've designed your space. You've figured out which room, what you're going to convert into a wonderful home office. The next thing you need to do is prep your space, which means it's time for a really good thorough declutter. So you need a few supplies. I recommend getting some donation bags. I'm saying floral bags, hopefully, to be optimistic here some recycling bags, trash bags, maybe even a shred if you're doing um, papers. And then as soon as you've got your um, supplies, set a timer. If you really, really dislike, may I even say loathe decluttering an organization, set a timer for maybe just say 30 minutes. You can, any, you can do anything for 30 minutes a day, right? But if you do 30 minutes a day for four days a week, hey, you just got yourself two hours of organizing or decluttering time. Well, if you do that for four weeks, that's eight hours. That's a full day of decluttering and organizing. So it really adds up. So put a timer on, get other people involved in the family if you need to, and then just work your way around your, the room or the area that you're wanting to organize. Put things into the right um, allocated designated bags. And then I find it really helpful to recite some decluttering mantras if purging and decluttering is difficult for you. And so a few of our favorites, here's, here's one of them. If you don't love it, need it, or use it, it doesn't deserve a place in your home. And I find that's really true that for some of us, we just hold on to things without really evaluating, was this something I love? Do I need it? Do I use it? If it doesn't meet any of those criteria, out it goes, let somebody else enjoy it. Or if it's just not donatable, sorry, it's, you know, it's had a good life, let it go. Fine, and then secondly, if something is usable, it doesn't mean that you need to keep it. And that applies to a whole bunch of things, but let's just say we're talking about office supplies. Well, what about pens? How many of us have, I don't know, 50, 100 pens in our, in our offices or, or at home? Who needs 50 to 100 pens? Nobody. And most of us didn't even buy them because we get them for free from, you know, all kinds of freebies that we go and get them. So again, so really analyze, what do I really need? How many, what is the quantity that I need? And let the rest go because the less you have in your home, the more organized you're going to be. And then finally, declutter without guilt. What do I mean by that? If somebody gave you something, maybe your grandmother's sister's aunt gave you just this great hand-me-down, but you absolutely hate it, it's okay to let it go. I'm sure that when you give gifts to people, you don't expect them to hold on to these items forever. So declutter without guilt. It is quite okay. Now, once you've settled on the location for your new office space and you've done all those wonderful decluttering tips that Janet just shared, now comes the fun part of visualizing and designing a new workstation. And one of the most important steps of the designing process is really being able to visualize that space. And that's where we can step in to provide that. Part of our process is one of our designers would come and take a survey of your space, take a quick inventory of all those items you decided were important to keep, and then incorporate them into your design. 
And with this information, we are then able to provide you with drawings and 3D renderings to show you exactly how it's gonna look in your home. So you really don't have to worry about, is it gonna be too big? What's it gonna look like in here? Um, and in our drawings, we can even add different renderings of people to really give you the idea of the scale of what that built-in is gonna look like in your home and making sure that everything really is accounted for and it's gonna work for you. In this particular design you're seeing, the client had a beautiful antique table that was being reused as a desk, so it had no storage. So we designed and built this unit to complement the room, and it has four functioning file drawers. The two drawer fronts all the way to the left are actually a door that opens up with a roll-out printer shelf, and then the top has a combination of open and closed storage. So this is just an example of how we can take something, make it very functional and organized, all while maintaining the look of a beautiful piece of furniture for you. Yeah, that's really awesome. Okay, so finally, you've got your install, you've got your room all set up, and it's time to put everything back. So maybe if you were decluttering and you had to move things out of the way in order for your closet install, you put things away in boxes. So now it's time to get everything out and put them away. And I highly recommend spending just a little bit of time, investing in some time to really put things away strategically so that all the items have homes. It's very easy just to take things out of the boxes and throw things into drawers. But if you don't set aside the time to really implement a system from the get-go, you're probably not going to go back and spend that time again. So take some initial time to organize and then think strategically about where things belong. How many things do you need right at your fingertips? So I have five drawers in my desk and everything has a place and a home and I have little organizers inside the drawers as well. So even if anyone in my family comes into my office, they know where to find things. They know where the scotch tape is going to be, the envelopes, the stamps. So I highly recommend that. And then also give the, give the family members a tour once you've finished organizing or get them involved as well so that everybody is on board. Now, referring back to the consideration that Janet mentioned earlier, how long do I plan to keep this space here? If you can start thinking beyond just an office, you can start incorporating different functions into your built-in. The built-ins can certainly have a dual purpose, and I know many are now faced with virtual learning in the fall for their children, and there may now need, um, there's now that need of having a dedicated area for your children's Zoom calls for the classrooms, arts and craft stations, keeping their schoolwork and projects organized. It's just another necessity on top of everything else that we're being faced with during these times. So this is an opportunity to design and create a beautiful area in your home that your whole family could really benefit from, as Janet mentioned, kind of making it a family process of showing everybody where everything is so it can be used by everyone as well. And as we enter into the new academic school year and really hunkering down and getting comfortable this fall and winter working from home, this could be a fun family project to get everything organized and working for you. So you are successful at working from home and organized, but also still enjoying your time at home with the new built-ins that you've created. So now we're gonna just um, explore a few tips and tricks to enhance your productivity when you're working from home. And one of the things that really helped me stay organized um, during the initial phase of lockdown was establishing a routine. And the first thing I did was bring up my Google Calendar and put everything on, on that digital calendar. So for example, I put a 9 a.m. start for when I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be sitting at my desk. I scheduled my workout classes online as well. And one of the things, the, one of the fun things that we did as a family was we implemented a 4 p.m. tea time and everyone in the family would stop what they were doing. We would all go outside and enjoy a cup of tea um, and a couple of biscuits or cookies. And it didn't matter if it was rain or shine, we'd be out there with blankets sometimes or umbrellas. And it just became just this fun break from this, this life that we were living at the time. We don't do it anymore, but it may be something that we implement back in, in the fall as well. 
So secondly, um, use a timer. If you're, if you're anything like me, I can tend to get a little bit hyper-focused and it's hard to break me away from the computer. So setting a timer so that you really are forced or accountable to get up and away from your desk is also really helpful. And then I can't stress how important it is to eat breakfast and lunch away from your desk and not staring more at the screen. Take a break, go find somewhere else to eat. Maybe find somebody else in the family who's also hungry and eat together, also helpful. And then establishing some boundaries as well is super helpful. So I considered even getting an open and closed sign on my office door or somewhere around if you don't even have a door that you can close so that people know that you're either available to talk to or not. It can be very, very distracting if you've got multiple interruptions throughout the day. So establish some boundaries ahead of time, I think is really helpful. And then also, um, starting and ending each day with a cluttered, with an uncluttered desk or surface area is super, super helpful. So starting each day so you know where everything is and then ending each day with a brain dump. Maybe you didn't get to all the tasks that you needed to do on your to-do list. So instead of just thinking about them all evening, write everything down, whether it's digital or whether it's on a piece of paper, so that you're not thinking, you're not carrying all that weight around mentally. And then decluttering your brain is just as important as decluttering your space. I'm a huge believer in decluttering both. And then also, if your kids are working at a space, maybe you need to corral their items as well into some kind of container. If it's doing double duty as a kitchen table or a, uh, or a kitchen island, so that everybody is decluttering and organizing their space at the end of the day so that there's a, there's a separation between work and then the rest of your life in the evening. These are very true. <laughs> now, a couple of questions that may come up during this process. How much does it cost to have a built-in installed? Well, this is a very popular question and also probably the most difficult to answer. There is such a wide range depending on how intricate or how minimal of a design you would like. But the great news is, is we do free consultation appointments. There are no strings attached. After we visit your home, we can generate designs within a 48-hour time period from your appointment with a detailed price list and along with those 3D drawings. So there's absolutely room for some back and forth to make sure we're meeting your design and budget expectations. But to give you an idea, pricing usually starts around $1,500 to help you gauge a starting point for a minimal design. Um, and another question that people may have is how long does this process take from beginning to end? So I can answer for my scope and then I'm gonna hand it over to Janet. But as I mentioned, our design process would have a 48 hour turnaround time um, from when you receive your drawings. But the decision making process is at your discretion. And once you've made a decision, it's about a three to four week lead time from when you sign your contract to when our installers are leaving and everything is cleaned up and ready to go. And so on our end, we also offer complimentary consultations. Uh, we work within a, about a 20 mile radius of Wayne, Pennsylvania. And we also do virtual, virtual organizing sessions as well. And then we typically work in blocks of three or four hour sessions. We can work full days, which is about seven and a half hour day. And if that was something that you wanted to do. For most of our clients, they're um, they, they're basically done after about four hours with us, but we can definitely work full days as well, depending on how long the project is. And then the last question, what if I don't know where to put my home office in my house and I don't have the vision for it? Will you be able to help me figure it out? And I'm gonna hand this one over to Janet. Yes, we can definitely help. We would come in and that would even be part of our consultation. We'd ask you a whole bunch of questions, like some of the things that we mentioned already. Where do you like? Where do you feel the most comfortable in your home? Where's the best light? And we would help you figure it out. Um, not everyone is, is a visionary. And on my team, we're all trained to really look past what we're seeing and to see the potential in people's homes as well. And I think that's really helpful. Awesome. 
So that concludes our webinar. Hopefully you're leaving this with a few more uh, tips and tricks and ideas of how you're going to proceed in this time of um, working from home. If you want to contact us at the Organizing Professionals, you can uh, call us at 610-783-3553, our email address, info at theorganizingprofessionals.com. And we're also on social media, on Instagram, The Organizing Professionals, and we're on Facebook as well. So please follow us. And Laura, what about you? And you can reach us at 610-431-3500, and you'll get right in touch with the designer to set up an appointment. And, or you can reach us through our email at sales at diplomatclosetdesign.com. All right. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for further, for further items that we're going to do and have a great day.